Hi everybody and welcome to Travelling with Russell and welcome to a new video and welcome to Moscow. Now I've actually decided to make a video that I wanted to come to make for quite a long time but now that we've got beautiful weather I think it was only appropriate we come for a walk around the other Kremlin in Moscow is my liver Kremlin. It's right behind me. We're going to go and check it out together. If you haven't heard of Is My Liver Kremlin before, that's totally okay. I don't think there's a lot of videos on YouTube about it. It's essentially a big tourist attraction and it's only about 30 years old. It's a very young attraction here in Moscow. And a lot of people who perhaps don't live in Moscow come to visit this. It's a place that's very popular for people to take photographs and come and walk around the buildings and essentially have a nice day here in Moscow. We're not far from the center of Moscow here. It was just a short metro ride. So I really had to come today because of the weather. The sun is out. It's a little bit cloudy. It's still a beautiful day though. Just looking back from the Kremlin itself, there is a series of hotels right in front of us here. And these are called Alpha, Beta, Gamma, and these hotels were built for the Olympics in 1980 here in Moscow. So these are actually older hotels than what the Kremlin is that we're going to go walk around. Apart from the Kremlin buildings, which we're going to walk through now, there is actually also a flea market and an art market at the back of the grounds of the Kremlin. So hopefully we can have a walk around the flea market as well. They're not very susceptible to people filming, so hopefully we can get a little bit of footage of that and give you a bit of an overall view of Izmail of a Kremlin and the market that's nearby. Another thing that's very popular here at Izmail is to get married and they actually have a marital palace here where you can come and get married. So possibly we might see a few wedding couples come and go. I'm going to walk around for a little while and hopefully we can see some because they're always very nice to see everyone dressed up and taking part in the wedding ceremony. I'm not exactly sure what I'm seeing here, but possibly some kind of a reenactment. <laughs> it doesn't look like it's uh, very dangerous. I think more people are uh, hugging and smiling, but perhaps they're doing some kind of an event. There's quite a lot of guys here and they're dressed up in different costumes. And this is the thing with Ismaila, you can come on any day of the week and something different's happening. There's quite a lot of people gathered around to watch it as well. And I think perhaps it's come sort of a battle enactment. I'm not sure, but so far <laughs> it seems pretty friendly. As we walk around, the actual different buildings here are different cafes, different small restaurants, and then there's also some museums as well. Now, it's not necessarily about the history of Russia, but there's definitely some interesting types of museums that they've got. And of course, a lot of these restaurants are really aimed at tourism and people coming here as a tourist to, you know, take in some Russian culture, if that's the right word. You can actually get some hot drinks as well with fruit inside, which is always very nice on a cold day. Now, thankfully today's a little bit of a nicer day. It was raining yesterday, but so far today it's very nice. And then lots of different, very beautiful buildings. Now, of course, this was built very recently, but it's meant to look a little bit older than what it really is. There's also a number of different small stalls with different things for sale. This gentleman's got silver, it looks like, or very shiny metal. I'm fairly sure it's silver though. And you can pick out pendants and then you can put them onto chains or bracelets and different things like that. The other feature that's very noticeable as you walk around this mile over is the wooden buildings and the wooden structures and they're not small buildings either this is probably 10-story building all up 
and all made out of wood with a lot of detail in it. The actual marital palace that's here is interestingly called the Ministry of Joy. Now I wonder who might be watching this who is married. Can they vouch that they went to the Ministry of Joy to get married? I wonder. And I think possibly we might just catch a wedding coming, couple coming out of the building right here. And they actually get married up on the upstairs level. And then all of their family here is waiting to greet them coming outside now. And you can see all the rose petals and people want to present flowers. Almost any day that you come to Ismailova, you're going to see a wedding or two. And it's always uh, fun to kind of watch them come out of this door right here. Now I've actually attended a wedding here. My wife's friend got married here quite a lot of years ago. And we actually stayed at the hotel that you saw earlier in the video as well. So I know this place pretty well. And then out comes the couple. And the photographer was a little bit nervous for a few minutes, you know, making sure that he got the right photo and the right shot. And everybody starts cheering for them. Uh, it's very nice to see this. Uh, of course, I don't know them at all. I just literally turned up here, but it's so fun to come. And especially on the weekends, there's always a little bit of a crowd here to see it. And maybe some people are a little bit uh, happy or jealous, I'm not sure. And they like to do the party poppers and the balloons and petals. So it's really very nice. And we picked a great day to come as well because the weather is just beautiful. One of the little shops here has lots of candles and that very distinct aroma when you walk in of that candle liquid, I guess. Wow, super nice. These are very cool. Check this out. There's lots of different shapes and objects different very interesting and detailed candles is anybody a big candle collector let me know in the comments please once the photos are taken care of all the family partake in having some drinks and normally someone goes to the local shop and grabs a few bottles of champagne and then everybody shares a drink and these are very much normal russian traditions when you come to a wedding, it's very simple. No worries at all having a few champagnes on the street and enjoy the afternoon. Yeah. There's also a guy here doing some metal art. It's just really interesting. Now, for me, if I see this, I'm thinking shashlik. I'm not thinking about hammering some metal. I want some pork on a stick. You can obviously tell we're very much in a tourist part of Moscow because the menus are actually in English and Russian and they make it very simple. I mean, everybody comes to a Russian restaurant to have French fries, right? Not really, I don't think, but maybe we can have some beer instead. <laughs> so basically, they're actually fighting, well, I'd call it sparring, really. And it's all completely safe. There's not really anybody doing any big swings, but it's definitely interesting. It's like one team against the other. Perhaps it's different boxing clubs, perhaps, that are getting involved in it. So somebody in the comments can let me know what's going on here. Now, this is basically sparring the best thing I can kind of figure out from this and nothing too overly uh, aggressive and they've actually even got uh, I guess judges or referees as well so after talking to somebody here that uh, explained it to me it's a friendly uh, event now actually 
There's people from Russia and Belarus. Now, of course, they are friendly nations. But I think perhaps in this event, temporarily they're not, but it's all very well orchestrated and there's judges and referees and, you know, nothing too overly uh, dangerous about it. There seems to be never a dull moment when you come here and there's always a little bit of an event going on of some kind. Some interesting architecture of a couple of very well-known Russians right there and a couple of people taking photos of them. Have a look at the building. Kremlin Gallery of Art. Now a lot of these are designed as tourist attractions more than very true museums. I guess you've got to have them somewhere in Moscow, right? Now, this is a definitely a nice place to come for a walk and especially if you like taking photos and selfies, definitely a place to come to. I've actually spotted a very rare fish in the pond right here. Have a look at the vodka fish. This is a very rare species. You don't see them very often. I think there's only one in here. Has anybody seen a vodka fish before? It's a great place to take a photograph here as well. Actually, the water is absolutely crystal clear. Now, of course, if you were to come here about two months ago, it was absolutely covered in snow and everything was white. But now the sun has come out, everything has melted and it just makes for such a nice place to come on the weekend like this. I wonder for everybody watching, have you seen these padlock trees? Now these are all around the world and I've seen them in different islands, even in the Caribbean. So what a lot of people do who get married over there at the marital palace, they'll come over here and put a lock on here and they'll usually have the date and the people's names and there's some very elaborate ones. And there's this is the one from the hardware store right there. And then the idea is you actually go to the little pond where we walked over and you throw the key in there so you can't essentially break the lock of love. And I just caught in the side of my eye the view of the wedding couple coming to get some photos on this bridge here. And the photographer again is trying to find that perfect photograph and background. And this is a place that's very popular to get married in Moscow because you can get some just beautiful photos, you know, even just simply going around a few of the different backdrops. And then from the Kremlin, we're going to walk through to the market. And this is actually held seven days a week, but the best days to come are on Saturday and Sunday. And the earlier you can come, the better, because there's probably better things if you come earlier. It's essentially a flea market. And there's a lot of older Soviet and older Russian items available. And it's just a, such an interesting place to walk around and reminisce about you know, the olden days of Russia and the Soviet Union. And let's see if we can find some interesting stands. There is actually a mix of different vendors here as well. And literally you'll see people that have just got stalls on the floor and a lot of second-hand items and bric-a-brac, I think is the right word. And hopefully when you come, you can find something that's interesting or perhaps historical, or it might be just be from somebody's bottom cupboard at home. Hopefully as I walk around, nobody's gonna give me too much stress. I have tried to make a video here before and too many people were yelling and carrying on and telling me to stop filming. So I basically went for lunch and went home and I never ended up making a video on the channel. So hopefully today, there's a few more happy and smiling faces on my video. There is actually hundreds of stalls to walk around. So of course I'm gonna find it very difficult to fit everything onto the video. And actually the main reason for coming to Izmaila was to come and see this market and have a bit of a walk around and see some of the different stands. This gentleman's actually got some Soviet watches and you can actually buy the 
main part of the watch and then he's got straps as well. Very interesting. Now I'm actually gonna be almost very happy every time I see a different stand with different interesting things on it. You know, this one here with perhaps silverware and knives and forks. And most things that you're seeing here are from the Soviet era. Not necessarily new, of course, but there's definitely a lot of interest in people wanting to find perhaps something that they don't have or they want something nostalgic for their house. Have a look at all the people back here. And there's so many different things when you're looking at the stalls. It's definitely not organized in terms of the different stands as you walk. Each one has got something quite different from the other. Have a look at this. There's a Russian amber. This is very neat. Now, when I was working on cruise ships in America, we were selling this as Baltic amber, but most of it comes from Russia in some form. That's pretty cool. And of course, if you want a little bit of nostalgia, have a look at the old mobile phones right here, and even a Discman, which is pretty interesting, and some old cameras as well, and more watches. It's almost difficult to know what you want to look for. I think when you come to these sorts of sales or markets, you know, you have a bit of an idea of what you might want, and then you end up going home with something completely different. You know, there's such a diverse mix of things. Now we can get some pots and pans. There's some glassware right here. Maybe a crocodile. And then over on the other side, there's some shoes. So there's just a little bit of everything in here. It's so interesting. There's a gentleman here with CDs and some cassettes as well. Check out these old cassettes. That's pretty interesting. Retro, yes, correct. And of course, back in the 80s and 90s, when perhaps they weren't so available in Russia, people were bringing them in and trading them. And now they've become almost a trendy thing to want and to add to a collection. Now this place does go on and on and it seems like you'll never find the end. There's another gentleman here with music and he's got albums, all the different eras of music, CDs, and he's even got some singles as well. It's quite difficult to capture this place on camera because there's just hundreds of stalls and every stall has something slightly different from the last one and just perhaps reminiscing and you know trying to remember the past by finding something that perhaps was never available in Russia and now you can come to this kind of place and find it. Lots of music and CDs which is kind of interesting to see and somebody's got magnifying glasses so it's one stall from the next has just got such a different um, things for sale. You can even get different types of buttons and things for clothing. Perhaps you're missing one from an old jacket and they have them. I think this gentleman's got stamps, which is pretty cool. Check out all the stamps right here. Not the best of light to look at them. But there's definitely people who like to collect stamps, I think. And then you can come to the outside parts of the building and they've got these permanent, I think you would call them antique shops. And some of these vendors have been here for a lot of years and they're permanent uh, shops that they've got that they open particularly on the weekends and they have so much amazing things. And then you'll even sometimes see people buying things from one stall and selling it on another stall. And this is the real 
perhaps the most famous part of coming to Izmailova to come to this antiques fair. Is that the right word? I think the very well-known expression is one man's junk is another man's treasure. And especially when you look at things like this, you know, on the floor, you may not find something that's beautiful, but perhaps you're a collector of a certain thing. And to find something that you just can't get anywhere else in Russia, and then it's here at the market. <laughs> so the market continues way off into the distance, and there is perhaps a lot more stalls than what I realized. I know when I come here in winter, it's really nothing like this. And of course, this is the first few weeks of nice weather in Moscow. And I think perhaps even today might even mark the start of the flea market season. <laughs> Is that the word? I keep calling this something different. And all the different things that are here. And there isn't just a couple of stalls. There is <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of them. And then there's a very large outdoor area with art and paintings and it stretches the whole way off into the distance and then there's numerous buildings off to my left hand side there's also more of these different flea market style stalls there is a big crowd here i wasn't perhaps expecting this many people today but it's definitely interesting to see and again, it's such a mix of things that you can buy. Star Wars jumper, perhaps a winter jacket. And then the next stall has an old radio. There's a few more of those mobile phones. Check those out. That's pretty cool. And there's just stall after stall. I really hope you're enjoying this video and this walk around of his mile of a, and to come to the flea market and to check out some of the things. Now there's a lot to see. It's almost probably too much. <laughs> if you come, you'd want to give yourself about three or four hours if you come here, particularly on the Saturday and Sunday markets like this, because you're almost walking to the next suburb. <laughs> if I just keep going off in this direction, I'll end up at the next metro station to get home. It's certainly a mix of items. Of course, some not so old items and some very old. Wow. I don't think I've even walked back this far when I've come to this before. I know I've seen some parts of the, the fair or flea market. Please let me know in the comments what you would call this where you live in the world. Now there is a mix of these stalls like we see here with people literally with a blanket or a sheet down. And then there's the permanent sellers, which I'm gonna walk back towards in a few minutes. Yeah, what does he call this? Now in Australia, we would call this a swap meet, especially this part of the place where we're walking now and people would well buy and sell things I'm not sure people necessarily swap things but I think you know there's obviously a lot of people in Russia that's never left Russia so some things here are things that were brought to Russia in different time periods and it's not something that you can buy at a shop in Russia definitely regardless of the different stalls and what they're selling one thing for sure it's a nice way to spend a saturday afternoon in moscow coming for a walk around the market there is actually a very beautiful park nearby as well with a pond and there's a ferris wheel and you can actually spend a whole day in this part of moscow not necessarily just coming to this event but there's a lot of people i'm a little bit in shock actually by how many people are here. I was thinking it wasn't going to be as big of an event, but perhaps the weather has brought everybody out of their shell 
now that winter is over have a look at this building in the background too this is pretty cool one of the other entrances when you walk up to the Kremlin initially is called the Vernissage and if you google that word it talks about artists or painters who come to display their art before they get famous and perhaps I'm not exactly translating the word correctly so perhaps someone can let me know in the comments but there is row after row of different art stands and different paintings from different styles and perhaps we're seeing some of the painters and maybe we're seeing some of the resellers and you can see here on the left there's more up on the wall right there and then as I go down the middle here there's different artists all the way along I'd be very curious if these are actually the people who do the paintings now I know a lot of these have been here for many years so they're basically a stand-in salespeople <laughs> or stalls and not necessarily the flea market style and I would imagine each person's got a number here like you see on the back of the frame and that's their spot and then on different weekends there'll be more or less people here selling paintings there's definitely a very eclectic mix of types of art that you see and different themes of art perhaps you want a cat or perhaps you want some kind of a scenery or a flower painting and coming back now to some of the permanent stands that are here so these ones on the left they can actually close a roller shutter and then leave everything here and then open it the following week and trade again and then the ones on the right hand side over here is where they actually bring their things and put them on a designated stand so these ones have to carry things to and from their vehicle to start the sale and then these ones on the left they just open the door and then start trading and again there's such a mix of things all these containers of pennies and coins and perhaps rubles and kopecks I'm so used to saying irregular currency I forget sometimes I'm in Russia perhaps I can bring home a couple of lions and I can put them in my apartment now if you're not aware we just moved into a new place last week I think my wife might be not so happy if I brought these home and uh, put them somewhere in the lounge room have a look at all the different things they've got in here perhaps you can get a big rooster or a samovar which is something that you can make tea in or an old telephone check that thing out check this out there's actually a Moscow metro map right here this is a very old map because of how limited of the amount of lines there are and even the station so I catch the red line and the last station there is Yugozapana and actually when I first came to Russia 10 years ago that was the last station and now they've added about seven more along that red line that's a pretty cool poster to have up on the wall I think it's very easy to get lost when you walk around here and see all of these different stands and stalls and different things that they've got you know, there's a thing there for your fireplace there's an old radio I think it looks like and then some glass bottles and just things from different eras and it's just interesting to see all of this different things that they've got at each stand now there's probably two ways I could have made this video one would be just walking around and not talking and just doing a walkthrough 
of the whole area. Now look at the older radio here, or well, probably not that old, but depends on how old you are yourself. And then, like this, I can just walk around and talk about what I see and the different objects. You know, there's such a varying <laughs> selection of things. Old scales, more radios, and then even perhaps some medals or some badges from military uniforms. It's just fascinating. And I hope it comes out on the video, you know, just the size of this and the amount of things that they've got and the maybe something you've never seen before. I mean, certainly things I've never seen before. Going back a few months ago, my uncle in Australia, Peter, he told me, Russell, go and find a swap meet or a market that sells second-hand items and make a video about it. Now, I've known about Ismailova for a lot of years. You know, literally, since I first came to Russia, I've been coming here at some point myself. But, you know, this uh, video is a little bit in honor of him. And I hope it kind of just shows the diversity of items, and just different objects that are on display here. And, you know, things that maybe people actually used to own and now want to own. Now, I really have a question for everybody. I mean, do you come to these kind of places or to these weekly or monthly events? You know, is it somewhere that you enjoy to come and visit and see? Or oh, check this guy out, he's got knife sharpening. This is very cool. Perhaps he makes his own knives, I wonder. This is very fascinating. There's also something quite quirky to coming here as well. Because there's you know, such a mix of things that's trash and treasure at the same time. And you know, it's up to an individual person to separate that as they look around. Maybe we need a new chopping board. You know, there is things that are you know, very, very old here. And then there's things that are relatively new. And you've got to remember if you go back to Soviet times, I mean, a lot of Western items just weren't in Russia. They weren't here. And then how they got here over the years and became available is the mystery in itself. There is just stand after stand. You can see way off in the distance all of the vendors and traders. Is that the right word? There's of course a lot of people that are looking for specific things, you know, not necessarily just wandering around every stall. So there'll be a certain item that catches their attention. Have a look at some of the LP records right here. Queen, Led Zeppelin, and these were of course big in the 70s, 80s, 90s. I mean, now it's all different music. You know, it's not anything like it ever was. Toy cars. That's very interesting. And then over here, lots of different pins and buttons. You almost get to a point that you don't know <laughs> what to look at and what to stop and look at. Because there's just such differences from stand to stand and different objects. There's somebody here with uh, books and postcards, it looks like, which is really interesting. You know, some of them are very old. And then you're going to see plenty of people with some clothes and 
you know, maybe not so old, <laughs> but you know, there's definitely some vintage to them. There's some more watches. There's some more different types of amber. And then if you want a new coffee cup, that's also available. And different parts where you walk around, there's obviously more crowds, less crowds. Now this goes on from early morning until afternoon. Now mostly Saturdays and Sundays are the days that you want to come to it. And then it just keeps going. This is something that I find very interesting, all of these different lapel pins and there's different themes and from different eras and there's a whole row of them going all the way down here. Now these are different vendors that are doing this and quite a lot of them are from the Olympics in 1980 and then there's some from the World Cup and then there's also some that represent different eras back in the during the great patriotic war and then there is different things like they represent space flight and different heroes of russia and it's just fascinating all these different pins there's also a lot from different football teams as well so perhaps if you collect certain ones from certain teams it's very very interesting and you can actually come here and swap them and trade them and maybe find something different i wonder if there's any pin collectors out there you can see here again some from the olympics very fascinating there's a stand here that pretty much has only the different pins from the world cup in 2018 in Russia and I think these were pretty well traded and bought and sold at the time and then we can still get them today pretty much all of where we walked around was all the upstairs part of Ismailova so we started off over here on the right hand side and then I crossed over the bridge to all of the upstairs area up here on the left and then when you come downstairs well, to the street level. Then they have a little bit more tourist orientated stuff and a little bit of stuff that people maybe want to take back home with them or give to other people as gifts. And you can see here different uh, Matryoshka dolls in the theme of different sporting events and different people. And then there's the more classic ones over here as well. And there's quite a lot of these stalls. This is basically the bit where I kind of walk out to the exit and it's pretty much the main place that people walk into and see first. They don't necessarily get all the way to the back to see all of the flea market stalls. This outdoor area isn't quite as busy as I was hoping. Now perhaps another month or so once the weather gets even a little bit warmer, more of these different vendors will come out here. A lot of the ones at these stands are permanent returning sellers so they've got a forever stand here and they've even got ones that have got different militaria as well and then again you can see all the different dolls and i think a big crowd of people having a look for the best deal and maybe the most unique doll you can get them in absolutely any size you like and i think perhaps a lot of these are from china that are here having a look. It's a little bit dark here, but have a look at some of these gramophones that they've got. They've got a whole stand of them. And just so interesting to see these. I mean, have a look at the big speaker on it right there. That's phenomenal. I found something very interesting at this gramophone stand right here. Now, this gentleman has been super nice just to talk about these. And I let him know that I live in Aprilivka, which is in the southwest of Moscow. And these particular records were produced at the factory in Aprilivka. And the town where I live was basically a mono town that had a factory that produced records. And you can actually see on the label the Aprilivka 
uh, word or the town name because it was the factory that was right there. And I've found a bit of history from where I live in Moscow. I really have to say that gentleman uh, that has got the gramophones there and he's switched one on now to play the music and everyone's come around. He was so interesting and if he's watching the video, I just want to say thank you for having a bit of a conversation and sharing a little bit of history that I know about my town and what he knows about the record industry in Russia. Just so fascinating and to see something from the factory exactly where I live. I'd never seen one before now. This whole lower part of the Kremlin area is all now dedicated to, I'm gonna say souvenirs and items that not necessarily Russians have in their house. You know, they but mostly buy them to take and give to people in other countries. I've certainly bought a few things here over the years and took back to Australia and gifted to people and just there is stand after stand of them that go all the way down on this right hand side I must admit by a long way this isn't the most beautiful of places to come to and look at I mean of course the buildings that we first walked in and saw and then some parts of it just are a little bit rough around the edges you know it's a matter of coming here to embrace his my liver market and the Kremlin and to, you know, have a look at all the things that maybe you haven't seen before or you want to find something new, maybe a new coat or a new hat. And there is literally a style for everybody. Every time I come here, you know, I get stopped and tried to be sold some of these souvenirs. And I've got to explain that, you know, I live here and I've lived here for a lot of years and I don't particularly need a hat or something with the name on the front. Now, I think most people know that the nesting dolls or matryoshka dolls uh, with the paintings, I think everybody knows them so famously. However, maybe you want to paint your own or maybe you want to make your own Fabergé egg back there and you can actually buy all the items in the raw wooden form. Maybe you want to make your own lacquer box. <laughs> That's super interesting. That you can literally buy them exactly how they're made and then paint your own. For anyone that has been here before or recognized this place or have come to Moscow, more than likely you've come to Ismailova and been brought here to look for cheaper souvenirs than you'd buy them perhaps in the center of Moscow. And it's kind of interesting today that it's very quiet in these few laneways, which is the more tourist part of Ismailova. And there isn't really many people, uh, even with stalls set up. And there's definitely not any tourists here. I haven't seen very many as I've walked around. You know, there's some beautiful things though, I mean, don't get me wrong, but it's just a matter of finding people to sell them to. By a long way, this is probably also the most well-known souvenir market in all of Moscow that I think everybody does come to eventually when they come on a trip to Moscow. You know, whether they find out about it through somebody else or a tour guide brings them here. You know, there is stall after stall of very iconic, typical Russian souvenirs. And, you know, there's not just one or two of them. I would say even just this souvenir side of Ismail of a market, there's probably a couple of hundred stalls if you walked around very slowly. Maybe to me it just doesn't feel as busy in this part as the other flea market section. I would imagine most people that live in Moscow definitely don't need any of these souvenirs for their house. And if they're not planning to travel anywhere in the immediate future, they don't need to buy anything to take with them. 
Yeah, there's definitely a lot of different types of Russian souvenirs. I love seeing these pins. There is pin traders everywhere that I've walked around today. I'm not too sure how quintessential Russian souvenir some socks are, <laughs> but they've got some here as well. I think they're perhaps trying to attract a more broader audience than just the people that want the dolls. And some very interesting different shapes though, when you look at them closely. And then, of course, a lot of non-Russian souvenirs as well. But there's a lot of things perhaps people recognize from over the years or have never seen before. These are actually music boxes. They wind them up and play music. This is something very neat too, this glass and blown glass. Look at these different animals. They're so tiny. And of course, lots of glassware as well. It's always perceived everybody in Russia uses a shot glass to drink their <laughs> drinks from, but not quite. Lots of Moscow themed glassware as well. So as I made my way out of Ismailovo Kremlin and the Vernissage, which is pretty much the last part that I walked through right there, I really truly do hope you enjoyed this video of the walk around of the Kremlin from way back at the beginning to the markets and even the tourist market I think was that last part that's probably what I'll call it and I hope you found it interesting I have been wanting to come here for quite a while to make a video and with this nice weather today it was only appropriate the clouds have come over a little bit more now but I think the weather and the rain will hold off till I get home if you like the video give it a thumbs up that's a nice way to show your appreciation that you like the video and me making these tours in Moscow. Post a comment, let me know what you think. Do you like going to flea markets? Perhaps you've been to Ismailovo before. Let me know in the comments if you've been here, maybe what year you came here. Maybe you even stayed right there in the hotel, right across the way. I've actually stayed there a couple of times myself. We didn't go walking around the market when we came. But yeah, nice spot. These aren't actually very expensive hotels either. They're considered four-star hotels or three-star hotels. So they're quite an inexpensive place to stay because you're not really in Moscow center here, but you're not that far away by the Metro. If you want to follow me on Telegram, the link will come up right now. I post a lot of stuff uh, daily, nightly, and you can follow me literally when I'm not making videos. And if you want to see an older video on the channel, one's coming up right now. You can stay on the channel, watch something older, something a little bit different. Thanks everybody. I'm off on another adventure. Bye.